to just very quickly hit upon the Beatles for a second, because I'm obsessed and I'm obsessed by Beatles haircuts, anything about the Beatles, but I can definitely go through Beatles haircuts. Best John Lennon haircut, Don't Let Me Down. Best Ringo Starr haircut, um, I would say Rubber Soul era. Best George Harrison haircut, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. <laughs> Best Paul McCartney haircut, Fool on the Hill. Whoa, okay, I love this. Wait, break it down. What, wait, the Paul haircut, Fool on the Hill. How close so, is that? Is, the, the get back, is that get back hair? No, it's a little shorter than get back, um, but you're in the same ballpark. Uh, Fool on the Hill haircut is dark, slightly long uh, stubble. And then he's got a few little tufty bits at the back, but he's still got his little boyish mop top. It's like he's growing out his mop top and just starting to get that epic McCartney beard. But at this point, it's stubble. Then George Harrison, While My, Guitar, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, is kind of classic Jesus haircut. It's down to the bottom of his neck. It's shaggy. It's all over his face. He's clean shaven. Uh, John Lennon, Don't Let Me Down, is a little bit less of a tailored <laughs> Imagine haircut. So you know the Imagine kind of Bob that he gets. This That's has well just, I, yeah, well the, you know, you guys well are just weirdos talking about this. this is unbelievable. This so has I, hey, Dominic, King. Dominic. Yeah. So did you watch Peter Jackson? I mean, you watched the whole Beatles uh, of documentary. Right? Wait a minute. Here's a question. Did you watch Peter Jackson's take on the Beatles? Is that something you'd at all be interested in? I watched uh, about an hour of Get Back before it came out with Whoa. Peter Jackson. Um, which was pretty fun because he and I, uh, you know, I have two Beatles tattoos. And one of the major things that I talked to about uh, with Pete when I was in New Zealand was the Beatles because we're both obsessed. So I was lucky enough to be in New Zealand and he was like, hey, I got something to show you that you really dig. So I got a chance to see that. Paul McCartney, uh, Paul McCartney, Peter Jackson owns all four of the Sergeant Pepper's Beatles costumes from the album cover. Yes. Whoa. What's up? Wh what are you yeah. seeing in the first hour cut? Is that a, is that a, just the Rough. first hour of the, 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 the actual thing that aired or what does he, what does he actually show you? No, about? it was rough footage. But when I say rough footage, you, you know, you're talking about Peter Jackson rough, rough footage, which could basically be a movie in its own right. But it was just kind of cobbled together about, you know, 50, 55 minutes of stuff that he wanted to show me. And, uh, yeah, I got a huge kick out of it. So let me, let me ask you both of you guys this. So, you know, you put the two of them, to, you put Lennon and McCartney together and, you know, Harrison was sort of shut out in a way. And I think, yeah. uh, you know, angry about it. And, you know, as they used to say on Saturday Night Live, you could pay Bing, you could pay Ringo a lot less if they'll come on the show. But there's the thing. I, so you take Lennon, who I think uh, provided the edge, and you take McCartney, who provided the pop. Mm -hmm. And what they did was, well, I mean, it's just unbelievable how successful. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if you take them separately... Um, not so great, right? I mean, Ooh. I do like uh, uh, still a number of the things, uh, Double Fantasy from Lennon, but yeah. I've never been a big pop guy in terms of McCartney, although watching the Peter Jackson, the Beatles documentary, I got a new respect for McCartney and, you know, how he sat at that piano and I can't remember what he banged out, but it was just yeah. amazing to me. What yeah. what do you think about where the Beatles were and then what happened to them when then became individual performers and what do you think about the quality of their work? I mean, I, I'm I'm a Beatles fanatic, so I'm always going to be biased towards them. I totally agree with you. I think they they are way better when they're together. I would include George Harrison and certainly uh, Ringo Starr in that argument as well. I like what Lennon did with the Plastic Ono Band. I think there's some amazing things there. He's kind of brimming with all of this solo work that he couldn't get into the Beatles catalog. So he's got, you know, some really amazing stuff, jealous guy and woman and God and mother. And, you know, uh, he's, he's an extremely talented musician. I like McCartney that his first solo album, I like Ram. I do think that the, the great thing about both of those artists is also the thing that you can put up against them as a criticism, which is that, McCartney wants to create melodies. He's almost like addicted yeah. to melodies and yep. he doesn't, he doesn't want to get into too much edge, too much darkness, too much revealing right. of himself. Lennon on the other side, which is why they complement so each other so right. well, like oil and water. Lennon on the other side is like, I don't care if it's a song or not. I'm just going to scream my pain towards you because I need to get it out and it's cathartic. And I think they both benefited from the influence of each other in the same way that Harrison did. I mean, look, Harrison's an incredible 
musician in his own right. I think, unfortunately, because they met him when he was 14, they thought of him as a 14-year-old kid for almost all of their professional career. This is the guy that wrote, you know, While My Guitar While My Guitar Gently, gently Weeps. weeps. He wrote, or he here wrote, comes... He wrote, the, he wrote you something. You know, that, there's that story, uh, a guy's a story that uh, Harrison invited um, Clapton to his house. He said, I want you to come uh, early, early before, you know, I'm going to serve you breakfast in my in my garden, but I want you to come while it's still dark. And then as the sun came up, he, he sang to Clapton, uh, here comes the sun. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, that is a, like a mind boggling, I, that, that vision of the two of them sitting there while he sings, here comes the sun is just, yeah, just unbelievable. I, I, what can I you also, say? Uh, well, I wonder if he invited Clapton over a little bit early as well, because then he's hoping that his wife is sleeping because yeah, Clapton exactly, ended up banging right. his wife a, yeah, uh, a few exactly. months later. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's terrible. Yeah, it is a shame. So wait, you, you, you grew up in Germany and then yeah. jump on over to England. Where, where does the beat? How does, how does, how early does the, the like? Does when you move to England, do you have to become a Beatles fan? Do you immediately? revolt against the Beatles? Where, where do they implant them implant themselves on you? Well, my parents are both Mancunians. They're both from Manchester, which is about 20 minutes from Liverpool. So they were extremely influenced by the Beatles growing up. And, um, you know, my dad's favorite artist, Leonard Cohen, Bob Dylan, and then, you know, the Beatles. So they were all over us uh, as, as kids when we were in Germany. And then obviously when you're in Manchester, you know, they're everywhere. They're, it's almost like they've always been around the Beatles, you know, but I have this distinct memory as a kid driving in my dad's Volvo registration plate was VB 974 B. And, uh, he used to play, uh, Beatles for sale and it was on cassette. And I would ask my dad to rewind the moment at the start of Mr. Moonlight where Lennon sings a cappella on his own. Mr. Moonlight. And I was like, what is that? My dad's like, that's John Lennon singing. And I was like, I'll play it again. And my dad was like, do you want to listen to the song? And I'd be like, no, just play the star. So we'd play the star. And I'm kind of obsessive. And I remember my dad kind of saying, you know, you wanted me to do it like 30 times while we were driving because, yeah, I couldn't believe the the level of his voice. And there's something about Lennon. I'm, I'm like conscious of heroes and and conscious that, heroes you know let you down and I'm, I'm big on putting people on pedestals which i think is a bad idea because you know i can't live up to being put on the pedestal by anyone so why should i expect other people to but lennon was always kind of my my hero and continues to be i did I, my favorite thing about lennon is that thing we were talking about at the start he took his pain and turned it into art and that for me is the most admirable thing that you can do with trauma is create something beautiful out of 